In this tutorial, we're going to do some more practical JavaScript DOM exercises where we'll be updating a basic pricing table. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this JavaScript DOM exercises tutorial where you'll be going through some exercises to update a pricing table using JavaScript. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future tutorial updates. And if you want to get cracking with the exercises yourself, there's a link in the description below to CodePen where you can work through the exercises on your own and you can pop back to the video if you need help with any solutions. So in this lesson, we've got a basic pricing table on the page and it's just some bootstrap classes. It's actually just the template that they provide as one of their examples on the bootstrap website. So it's mainly just bootstrap classes that are set up on the various elements. I've added a couple of extra things in there to make the exercises a little bit easier for you as well. But you shouldn't need to touch the markup at all in the lesson because all of the exercises will just be solved with a simple bit of JavaScript code. So the solutions I'm going to give you are just sample solutions. There's always more than one way to do these things. And if you do come up with your own possibly better solutions, feel free to post them in the comments below or put a link to your completed code pen. So let's make a start with exercise one. So we've got these two pricing tables and this is a really simple exercise. We're just basically asking to add a new feature to the pro plan which is the feature of 24 seven phone support. And as the instructions suggest, rather than actually going into the HTML markup and adding this as a new list item, we need to do this via JavaScript. So if you followed any of the previous DOM exercises, then this should be pretty straightforward. All we need to do really is select the actual unordered list that's inside of the pro plan, and then insert another snippet of HTML. So I'm going to use the insert adjacent HTML function to do this. So I can just literally put the HTML in as a string of text. But let's first of all select the unordered list that's inside of the pro plan. And I've helpfully identified each of the pro and basic plans with an ID to make it easier to select each of the elements. So that's all we really needed to do for exercise one. You can see the new feature is appearing on the pro plan. But there are a couple of other ways you could have done it. You could have created a new HTML element and then appended that as a child to the unordered list. But either way works fine. I'm just giving you some examples of how you might use the JavaScript functions to update the document object. So let's move on to exercise two. So exercise two is asking you to actually move the basic plan to before the pro plan in the document. So this makes sense. You'd usually see the most expensive package at the far right of the page. But either way, this will be a good example of how to move elements on the page. So first of all, I'm going to get a reference to the basic and pro plan elements and store them in variables. And then I want to get the parent of the basic and pro plan. So I'm just going to get that from the basic element by accessing its parent node. Of course, the parent node of the pro plan is exactly the same. So I could have used that as well. And then I'm going to call a special function called insert before, which will allow me to insert the basic plan element before the pro plan element. So you can see now in our pricing table, the basic plan has been shifted to before the pro element. So moving elements around like this logically with JavaScript does actually modify the document structure, which may or may not be what you're after if you're trying to achieve the same thing in your own project. But another solution to this project would be to add a CSS rule to reverse the flex direction. So you can see this bit of JavaScript is doing the same thing as our previous code, but we're actually just manipulating the CSS via JavaScript. And of course, semantically, the HTML doesn't actually change. So this might be a better option if you want to keep the document intact. Either way is fine. I would probably go for the styling update or possibly even add a class to the element so that it could be easily removed later on. So that's a couple of solutions for exercise two. Let's have a look at exercise three. So exercise three is asking us to make a couple of changes to the styling of the pro plan element, in particular to the get started button, where we're actually going to be changing the colors and the text of the button. So let's first of all go ahead and select the button element. Because the pricing table is fairly simple, I can just select the button inside the pro plan element. 
but if it was a more complex document, we'd want a more specific CSS selector. And with the element selected, let's update some of its styles. And we'll update its inner text property to reflect the new text that was required by the exercise. So you can see in our output now that the button has a strong blue colour and white text, and the text has indeed been updated. So whilst this works, changing inline styles like this isn't ideal with JavaScript. It's much better if you've got a class set up that's got those styles applied already, and luckily with Bootstrap we do have that available. Which means we can achieve the same result simply by removing the existing outline primary class that's there and just assigning the BTM primary class, which essentially gives us the same result. So wherever you can, always use a class rather than applying a style, as it's easier to control that in the CSS later on. So let's have a look at exercise 4. So exercise 4 is basically saying that we've got a special offer on which is giving us 50% more storage on a basic plan and 25% more storage on the pro plans. So our job with JavaScript is to update the various storage values in each of the cards. So let's first of all get a reference to each of the storage amounts and I've made this exercise a little bit simpler for you simply by putting a class around the storage value for each of the plans and that class is storage amount. So with those two elements selected, I'm just going to take the value of the inner text for each of them and multiply it by the percentages to give us the new result. So you can see in the result that the basic plan now has 3GB of storage, whereas the pro plan has 25GB of storage. So this works quite well, but we need to be quite careful when we're working with numbers, especially that's been taken from the DOM with JavaScript, as if there's any text or strange characters in there, we might get a not a number result. So we can always wrap our text in a parse int function, which might help to make things safer. But again, ideally, this is something that should be updated directly in the HTML markup. So there's one possible solution for exercise four. Let's have a look at the final exercise, exercise five. So exercise 5 is pretty tricky, we need to do several things, but we're basically being asked to add a toggle or radio button that will allow us to switch between annual and monthly payments for both the basic and pro plans. So the first job is to add the radio button, and we only need one to toggle between monthly and annual, and then depending on which one's selected, we need to adjust the prices shown for both of those plans. So let's first of all insert some HTML markup for the radio button, So here I've just used the insert adjacent HTML function called on the container element and I've set up a basic radio button with monthly and annual options. The next thing I'm going to do is just create a JavaScript object that contains the information about the pricing. So here you can see I've got two properties, monthly and annual and each has individual properties for basic and pro that will give us the value back for that particular selection. So now let's create a function which we can hook up to our events. And we can get the selection that's made by accessing the value property of each radio button when an event's being captured. So let's then update the pricing element depending on what selection's been made. And again, in the HTML, there is some classes set up to show the pricing. So we can just access that class element and update the inner HTML or inner text inside it to show the new pricing. So because the value that I've set up in the radio buttons corresponds to the keys that are set up in the pricing object, I can just use square brackets to select that particular property and then access the specific plan from that selection. So let's do the same thing for the pro plan as well. 
And then finally, let's hook this function up to the change event for each of the radio elements. So let's give that a go. If we try and change the monthly or annual radio option, you can see changing to annual, we now get $100 a year, and for the Pro, $300 a year. And let's try go back to monthly, and it reverts back to the monthly rates, as stored in the pricing object. So that exercise is a good example of how you might work with external data that's been provided to you. For example, your pricing table might be generated off some config that's sent back from an API. And if in that result there was a pricing table such as this, and if in the result there was a pricing object such as this, you could use that to populate the prices of your pricing table. So that's the last exercise for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and learned a few functions that you can apply to your projects or at least your JavaScript skills when you're working with the DOM. If you did come up with your own different solutions then feel free to post them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.